this smells like farts. Yep. Yep. 100%. Yes. Uh, but honestly, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I don't want to be controversial. And for me, that's a bad thing. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Wine for the People's Blind Wine Tastings. Now, we shoot these things in advance, so obviously uh, this is probably a couple of weeks before it's going to come out. So just wanted to say big congratulations to the... For winning the AFL Premiership this year. You guys have done a fantastic job. Uh, Lockie, fix that in post, yeah. Um, as always, if you could please drop a like and subscribe to the channel, that does help us out enormously. Uh, big thank you to sometimes always the guys who hook us up with these wines. Again, if Lockie and I had to pick these, it would just be like, we'd walk our way through the shelves at Dan Murphy's or BWS. We'd get to the bottom and just be like, maybe we should do beer tastings next week, guys. But sometimes always, always giving us interesting wines. If you want 10% off these ones, pop down into the Discord. There's a link in the uh, uh, the description underneath the video. Down there, you can use a code, get 10% off all of these wines only for the week that this video is coming out. Um, and yeah, six reds coming up. It's a good way to start a Friday off. So let's see how we go. It won't happen overnight, but it will happen. Red wine. <laughs> <laughs> wine number one, pale ruby red pinot. A bit more savory than the, the giant steps we had last week. So not as perfume and pretty, but a lot more like rich, deep and kind of leafy. It smells like red berries, unsurprisingly. Um, you wouldn't believe it, but this red grape drink does kind of smell like red grapes. Um, this one's got me a little bit vexed. Um, I'm not too sure whether or not it's it's like a Gamay Trousseau thing or it is like a Norello Mascalese. It's got an outrageously sort of bitey acidity. Super driven, really sort of delicate structure. Oh, love it. Oh, that's gonna age really well. Oh, fuck yeah. Cracking Pinot, Hills, Adelaide Hills for sure. 60 bucks, love it. So it's got all the characteristics of a big red wine at the start, but then it just goes away into this nice little medium body thing. One of my famous mistakes is always guessing Grenache on reds. You only become famous for something by continuously doing it. So I'm gonna go Grenache on this one. I, I, I'm not the biggest fan of it. I'm not so convinced. It's not screaming to me what it is, although it is a very interesting drink. Um, gonna go around about 30 bucks and I'm gonna buy three bottles. One number two, it's a red wine. Slightly lighter. This is all you're gonna get from me in terms of color this week. It's either gonna be lighter or darker. It's like playing higher or lower in a game show. Very, um, it's like purple fruited. That's actually, uh, that's really fun. That's exactly what I would tend to look for in, in a, a smashing drinking wine. This juby, you know jubes? You know jubes? Yeah, like jubes. Um, you know, confected character. Lower acidity, chewy tannin. Reasonable on the alcohol front. Grenache all day here. And a really classy example of it with this nice kind of chewy, stemmy, like sapid tannin that's quite delicious. And I think in a couple of months, maybe six months, this will probably open up and envelop in the glass really quite nicely. I'm, I want to sting it, but the problem is that I just swallowed slightly incorrectly. So what's happened is I've had a little bit of red wine down, go down my air pipe and it hurts a lot. <laughs> that's not the wine's fault. Um, you can't make your wines idiot proof, unfortunately. So let's try that again. Uh, this is awesome. This is totally Beaujolais Nouveau. Like total Beauj. That is to die for. Fuck yeah. 50 bucks, 12 bottles. Yes, probably gonna be Henry's favorite one. Lovely piece of cherry pie, right? And you went to a restaurant that only is staffed by people who are power lifters, right? And you know something famously power lifters always have on their hands? Chalk. Uh, I'll take nine bottles of it. It's better than the last one, but it's also not 12 because I don't mean to nitpick Terry, but just keep your chalk off my pie, but also you're massive, so please don't hit me. Um, the acidity is rather low, but the chewy tannin, the savory kind of elements there, Add some complexity to what would otherwise be a just juice bomb of cherries and raspberries and plums and all that kind of thing. So big fan of this, six bottles, 38 bucks. I don't want to spend too much on it. I hope it's at that price. If it's anything more than that, I'm going to be a bit disappointed, but it's a really cool wine. Good stuff. All right, moving onwards. Uh, a more matured, denser, darker colored, almost like properly brown brick tawny. Yeah, darker, blacker core. So immediately I'm going Nebbiolo or something aged. Yeah, ball of red wine on the tongue as well. Whew, that's cool. So I think that this is going to be expensive. I don't really like it, but it's cool. I'm not the biggest fan of this this wine. I'm not sure. I'm a little bit vexed, to be honest. Like maybe someone's having me on or, or whatnot, but this is this one's cooked. Being heat affected, it is or oxidized or too old, but it's certainly past its drinking window. This is one of those wines you're trained to just think this is absolutely fantastic because it is. It has got a fantastic 
lithe tannin profile all across the board. Aromatically, it's showing this amazing dried leaf, prune, truffle, dried fig character. But there's still this element of like raspberry and cherry underneath. It is such a complex, well-rounded wine. Um, $70, I'll take one bottle of it. Variety, I don't know, like, um, I'm just so out of my depth with wine like that. It's just not, it's just not me, dude. It's not me. I'm not that guy. I think I'm that guy, I'm just not that guy. <laughs> Number four, in the re in the medium ruby territory. Got a bit of reduction here, but it's kind of married with this nice cumin spicy clove thing. You know what's interesting whenever I'm smelling wines? Like I'll smell something, I'm like, hmm, what does that smell like? And then I'll go, could it smell like beef jerky? Then I'll smell it again and it's confirmation bias where I'm like, that smells exactly like beef jerky. That smells exactly like beef jerky. Gorgeous wine, really gorgeous wine. Maybe not top tier. I don't think it's overly complex. I don't think it's meant to be. Um, around about 30 bucks is what I'm gonna spend it at. I'm gonna grab six bottles. It is like perfect mid-weight, mid-week drinker with a bit of structure. Aggressive tannin, aggressively tannic. It's much like the last wine, but it's when we're seeing something with a good amount of age on it and we're seeing something that's really, really young. This obviously isn't 60%, but I'm getting a slightly similar phenomenon where like it hits your tongue and then it just feels like it's like it, it just floats away, like it disappears off your tongue, which is bizarre. I don't know how red wine does that. So this is like, it's like meat wine or charred vegetables. Uh, that's that's where I'll be sort of pairing uh, up with these. Actually, no, I am seeing the potential, but I'm not seeing the captivating qualities that the previous wine had. So it's really great to see those side by side. I just, I, I just need some time to really fully assess the potential that that wine has. So we'll see how we go. One number five, this is lighter. I'm feeling optimistic about this one. This looks like a celebration of all things medium weight and medium body, which is where I'm trying to get to. Mm -mm 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 -mm. This is this smells already like amazing Gamay, uh, straight off the bat. A little bit like that Beaujolais that I think is Beaujolais uh, earlier on in the tasting. This sort of already gives me those vibes. A bit of a relief from the tannin bombs I've just had before, but it's still got some. It's got some graphite-y like, chalky grip to it. Yum, cool, great, all right, we're back. I thought I just wasn't in the mood for red wine. Turns out I wasn't in the mood for those red wines. This is killer. All right, what to say about something that's got it all. Like a really bitter, astringent back palate. Odd, like an oddly astringent, not something that I've encountered in, in many wines. I don't think in any wines at all. I'm not too sure what's going on there. Could just be me. Look, I do enjoy the wine. I think it's fantastic. I think it's been really well crafted. I want to know what the other guys think about this little bitterness thing. Yeah, I love that leafy, stemmy thing, this kind of chewing on cinnamon sticks aspect to it, but not like aggressively awful. Well, I haven't guessed Shiraz in a while. I'll go Shiraz again, but like cool Shiraz, like kind of like, it's like a 60 year old who drives a Tesla, but does it not unironically, but does it in a way that you don't look at him being like, you wanker. So I have 12, I've got to have 12 of them because I like the other ones more. And that'll cost, well, Teslas are expensive. That's a $60 bottle of wine. The last wine something that's a much brighter, again, clearer, but it has uh, a slight cloudiness to it and a faded rim. And I don't think Henry or Noah are going to like this because it's very reductive. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> oh my God. Why? We've had so many nice wines today. Why does the last one have to smell like farts? It smells reductive, which screams Pinot Noir. Definitely needs a good agitate. Yeah, uh, it, this has got reduction, but I hope it doesn't infiltrate on the palate. I want to champion wines like this. However, this this level of reduction is, I got to be honest with, with you and anyone at home that actually, you know, uh, winemakers that watch this stuff, but this level of reduction is unacceptable in wine and someone needs to actually, like, that just, it gives wine a bad name. Love the tannin profile here. It's quite subtle and well put together, but bursting bright cherries and currants alongside it. Like olive tapenade, salty, briny, not as good as the previous wine. It tastes better than it smells, thank God. Honestly, it just needs a little bit more development and character. And to be perfectly frank, it's just like, I'm, I'm, I've tried a bunch of fantastic wines and it's just not at that kind of quality of the first one or the, the Barolos or anything like that. So I'm gonna go three, I'm gonna go 40 bucks. Nice to kind of entry point Pinot pricing. Imagine you're eating dinner. I right, put you off your meal. Um, no, I don't like it. Um, $30. Lucky, I'm so sorry that you have to edit that. That was a mess of a fucking tasting. Uh, let's see what the boys think. <laughs> what did you think of this lineup? Because I'm not gonna lie, six red wines to finish a Friday off 
uh, with tastings. It's an interesting way to go about it, and I did struggle to differentiate some of these. How did you I, guys actually, go? I actually had a really good time. I liked all of these. Oh, Jesus all, Christ. All, all of them I really, really enjoyed. I'm going to be the devil on the shoulder oh, to Noah's God. Angel because there are wines here that I think they shouldn't be on the market. They shouldn't be released. Which they, ones? Those. Oh, we'll get there. But um, but there are, there are sort of, to preface that as well, there is uh, at least one or two wines here that I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. I cannot wait for them to this be one of his be... mates who's made that. <laughs> <laughs> um, wine number one. Uh, this one does deserve to be on the market. Loved it. I didn't quite Loved enjoy this Yeah, one. didn't mind. I think it was just Apex, like really good Adelaide Hills Pinot. Continuing my tradition of having no idea what Grenache tastes like. I guess this was Grenache. Um, it's high acid, man. We haven't done this educational video on we'll what Grenache is we'll yet. I just there. assume we'll, we'll that it's, a, it's either we'll Pinot or Grenache. We'll teach you. We will teach you. How um, it's I wanted six bottles of it and for 45 yep. bucks. Uh, cool. 12 for 60. Nice. Mm. Shit. Yeah, right. That's it. Uh, it's Eastern Peak. This is uh, Owen Latter. Uh, this is a fantastic Geelong yeah. uh, at level Chardonnay. Oh, sorry, yeah. Pinot. Pinot Noir. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. You did say Yara, Vic. Uh, yeah, no, of the, yeah, of the, exactly. yeah, yeah, of that level. It's fantastic. Uh, I very minimal sulfur here as well. Uh, this is a fantastic wine from a fantastic winemaker. This is the home block. So Owen Ladder sources his own fruit for his own project, which is Latter. Eastern yeah. Peak is the family business, family which he's stuff. taken over from his father since the age of 15. And this is the stuff that he gets from only the family vineyard that he treats really fantastically and he farms his own uh, own way. I think it's a brilliant wine. I thought this is a fantastic wine. I don't know what you guys are talking about. This is an epic wine. Hey, dude, and six you are bottles. Hey, man, I was into this one. No, 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 no. I was yeah. into this one. No, 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 no. And the next one, I was also into. One Next number one was, two. was uh, my wine aligner. Oh, cool. Really? Yeah. Wow. I, I really liked it too. Uh, I didn't think it was wine aligner, but I really enjoyed it too. I think it was a like great take on Grenache. Fuck, I thought it was Shiraz. <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ. The dizzying heights thought, of my taste. I thought this is, it's either got to be Grenache or Beaujolais Nouveau. I would spend 50 bucks and buy 12. 38. 33. Four, magic for, number. 33 for nine. Ha ha ha. Well done. What yeah. is it? Oh, wow. It Grenache. Grenache. Bail. Well done, no, 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 no. It's, yeah. it, it speaks to that too. Yeah. Here Perpetual big, holidays. Big love that. Easy radio. I love that. Fantastic execution on That's that. what I like about these guys. They make really no nonsense, really easy drinking, simple wines. Perpetual that, that holidays. That have some mm, kind of. I like that. Yeah. Mm. Like these wines have like a complexity and they're very true to variety, but they're also approachably priced and really delicious. Uh, All right. Number three. Talk this about is things where it going starts. downhill. Yeah, let's get it. <laughs> Fucking hell. What was this? You're kidding, really? I thought this was like epic Barolo. I didn't I think would, it was epic uh, Barolo. What I, did you think it was, Brenda? I didn't care. You're right. It could be epic, like really, really, really well aged Nebbiolo because it's, it's got a truffly mushroom thing going on. A lot of tertiary developed characters, but I was just like aged past beyond its date. I wouldn't. Yeah, I, I loved it. I thought it was. I thought this was, this is one a lineup for me. I thought it was awesome. Uh, one bottle, seventy dollars. One glass, ten bucks. One glass, uh, ten bucks. Jesus. Twelve. Yeah. Twelve bottles, a hundred dollars. <laughs> that has got to be the biggest difference you two have <laughs> yeah. ever had. In a, yeah, yeah, because yeah. usually it's me being like, nah, this is shit. And you're like, you don't understand what you're just talking to, about. Just but to prove everyone at home that thinks we're colluding, it's all genuine. You're meant to know what you're talking about. All right, yeah. how much was it, Locke? Wow. Okay. No one got it right. Twenty two dollars of crap. Yeah. Oh, you know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Let's be fair. Okay. This wine has been sitting in this room for about a year. Yeah. Without <laughs> any temperature control yeah. whatsoever. Why have we done that? So this is one of the the sometimes always double ups. They gave oh, us two bottles of this, shit. and yeah. since we've been playing catch up, we've had one bottle missing. So Lockie pulled this off the shelves. And it was an Alpine Nebbiolo, which we thought was quite quite tight and quite stemmy. But now it's looking past that. Yeah. Look. If you want to be able to mature uh, your wines rather quickly, don't. Uh... <laughs> yeah, no, the, the place to not mm. do it is inside a small studio in a bar upstairs in Adelaide where there's no airflow and mm. it gets yeah. really muddy. This is the most non-optimal room. Studios, yeah. recording studios, the most non-optimal rooms for... If you're like me, <laughs> recreate this and you'll be able to try a 10-year mm. development within one year. It's fast-forwarding sure. through time. Yeah, That's what we it, just did. Put it in a sauna. Um, wine number four, also crap. Uh, uh, no, no. I, I mean, I grabbed six. I mean, I don't think it was crap. I thought it was uninspiring, but I thought it was a much, um, uh, a much sort of more complex version of this. One number two. One number two. Um, Thirty bucks and six. Thirty bucks and one. Forty-five and twelve. All right, we're at the we're, price we're point. On, we're on the money. On the money. And we made it. Nope. Morgan. Hey, dude. That's awesome. Fantastic. Uh, again, funnily enough, 
kind of takes the thing that I thought was Beaujolais Nouveau with a bit more structure, a bit more shit going on. So it's, it's Gamay from Thank Beaujolais. Um, Morgon, which is a, a great crew, a fantastic crew uh, within, um, uh, within Beaujolais. And yeah, tastes good. One number five, uh, my wine of the liner. I really liked it too. I thought yeah. it was great. Got this kind of like bright, juicy fruit, yep. a bit of structure, a bit of tannin. Yep. I, was, I was into it. How's this spice on it? It's fantastic. That's yeah, why that's... I said a cumin y, cardamom y. 100%. You know, like yeah, nutmeg. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Awesome. As soon as Very I taste cool. any of that, I instantly go to Shiraz, which I feel like is the wrong thing to do, but at uh, this point, it's what I'm not a bad uh, thing. Not a bad thing to do. No. You've, you've nailed it the last couple of times you've guessed Syrah. Yeah, yeah, and that so, made me feel good about it, so I'm just. Like, I'm going to go with you. You reckon Syrah? What did you think it was? I reckon it was whatever you think it is, because oh, I reckon thanks, you. you <laughs> Lucky, what All is right. it? Ooh, okay. That's some good value, little number. Dude, Ricardo. it is not Norello, but it is this fucking close! Awesome, that's great. I love it. How awesome. Looks like a wine that's been labelled by Hercule Poirot. I want I want to uh, <laughs> see somebody in... <laughs> that took me a little while. Yeah, I was again. wondering why you weren't laughing. I thought that would be right up your alley. Though. It is I mean, up my alley. Yeah, me, like, exactly. I had to go back in deep into my Tiny brain. Tiny Belgian man with a moustache. He solves crimes. Let's get it. Do, does anyone, especially our American friends, do you know of any frappato being grown in the States? Uh, because I would love to see what new world frappados are out there because I haven't seen any other interpretation outside of Sicily. And anyone from the Chalmers family? Yeah, man, let's do this. Come Hello, on, can we get do it. Frappado. This smells like farts. Yep. Yep. 100%. Yes. Uh, but honestly, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I don't want to be controversial. And for me, that's a bad thing. I said cool. 10 bucks one glass. Wow. Um, but, but smelling it now, it's starting to blow off. No, it's, it's blowing off. And that was my thing as well. I did a my classic little lasso trick to I try to, but... That smells like hot uh, I had three for 30. I had three for 40. I had my original one glass, I'd probably upgrade it to three. Yeah, I'm I'd probably upgrade it to six, 40. to be honest. 40 bucks, have a good. Scintilla? I beg your pardon? Scintilla? It looks like Scintilla. Yeah. It looks like every terrible Adelaide tattoo Hills. on an AFL player's wrist. Uh, honestly, I think it's a great wine, and it's a no sulfur wine too. For a no sulfur yeah, Pinot Noir to be that fantastic is awesome. Which actually helps the reduction. Like, yeah. if it's reductive and got no sulfur, um, you're able to actually get it to blow off a lot. It doesn't sit in there. It doesn't bind, it's a chemical thing. Good price, uh, and if you want to try some hands-off Pinot from the Hills at a good price, Great, great buy from a really good dude, really good producer, all that kind of thing. Honestly, line of lineup we got to choose though. Uh, that's got to be the uh, Papado, 100%. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, ciao. <laughs>